after the emergence of the, the governor of Imo State 10, he attacked the NLC secretary to well during the time of Aluga uh, Waba and took over the secretary for nine months. Mobilized talks in our secretary in Ower. And the state chairman of the NLC then had to abandon his position and run away from Imo State. And then we were looking for who will take position of NLC chairman. And then somebody of the advice started acting. The NLC sent a delegation to Imo, headed by Comrade Nasu, the current KB state governor, to reach some understanding with the governor there. And on the basis of that, he vacated the Secretary of the NLC, but before then, nothing is there now. He destroyed all seats, all computers, every document there, including photographs, files, documents, you know, belonging to NLC, were destroyed by talks and by uh, of the man. The Secretary was constructed and donated to the NLC by Roger Sokorja, his predecessor but he destroyed it. After vacating the office, we continued to engage him. He signed an agreement, you know, uh, with the NLC delegation led by Comrade Nassau, the current KB State Governor, uh, Comrade Mubaja, Williams, uh, Bior Bele, and I think TUC General Secretary, late uh, Lawa. And that agreement up to date has not been implemented. I wasn't the NLC president then. It wasn't, it wasn't politics. My predecessor was not playing politics by asking that the workers he described as those workers he paid. That was the situation. And when I emerged, we were here to even review these issues. When the governor now attacked workers, during the state delegates conference of NLC, the state delegates conference of NLC takes place in all the states of the federation in the country, including the FCT. It was only in Imo that the governor, after the commissioner of information, called me to tell me that they don't want a candidate in that contest. And I explained to him that we don't put people out whose union has sponsored that if they have a candidate, they should keep on supporting their candidates. But we can't tell people not to contest because the governor prefers the other candidates. Governor sent talks that day, they disrupted the election. I called them to continue the election. They continued and he sent policemen to disperse them who were appointed caretaker committee and responded. The, some people call, who call themselves elders asked for two weeks to resolve the matter. I appeal to the neck of the NLC that people, uh, these are from my state, they say the elders need two weeks and that they say they have discussed with the governor. In two weeks they will address this matter. That two weeks went into, I think, almost 40 weeks now. The, the so-called elders have not said a word. We behave as if it's business as usual. On May 1st, when the workers gathered again for May Day, the governor sent talks again. They withdrew all police and uh, civil defense people that were brought there and attacked the workers. Many of them were hospitalized. This time around, it was equally not in politics. It was not equally not that the workers were campaigning for anybody. Still on the issue of ghost workers and those he has not paid for three, four years. 
Now after that, the NLC met several years and asked us to give him another 14 days since there was an agreement reached after that action. And in the agreement, the governor was specifically asking for the, the draft and was using his hand to cancel them. At the end of the day, I said, let it go, since that is what he wants. Between that May till now, the governor didn't say a word, no meat, nothing. Now, when we sent him a letter, issuing another 14-day ultimatum, he approached the court. And part of the affidavit he, uh, he swore was that it was because he has been so busy that is why he has not implemented the agreement. But at the end of the day, he didn't get any restraining order before we started going. There is nobody in this country, the security agencies, that they know we are going to be more. We wrote them. We wrote the TSS, we wrote the police, we wrote everybody. And then when we got there, the events started unfolding. We addressed the workers and told some of them that came that Sunday which complained that they have not paid them for years. And we said that will happen tomorrow. Ask all the people they were owing to come out since the governor was saying he has paid everybody. So that we can assemble them for the governor to see the thousands of people assuming he was not aware. It was in the event of doing that the following day that we got report that workers that arrived as early as 7 a.m. were beating up their properties, their belongings, their phones seized. Some of them with broken eyes. It was because of that that around 9, that I went there with the assistance of about 20 security personnel. I was in the secretariat of the NLC and called some journalists to, be, to join, and then some of the officials of the NLC, so that we can address the press on the situation in Imo. It was then that the police led other people uniform multi and they came and we drew about 20 security personnel that we are there we cried to guiding us and then the policeman arrested me and handed me over to talk one of his small i don't know whether that one is sergeant or inspector say okay why don't you take him don't hand him over to these people he shouted on the on the sergeant or so and said, come on, shut up. And that was how they dragged me on the floor, took me to this boss emo, and about seven people. <laughs> I don't I can't explain the bit. You know, but they tied my nose, tied my eyes, tied everywhere, and they were hitting me with all manner of documents. And they were asking me why I was challenging hope that I should just say my last prayer and that they were taking me to call it Kujuaba River. That's where they would throw me. You know, that was in the process. I didn't know how the same people carried me to police reporters, the talks with their boss and brought me down there. And the police people were standing outside as if they are waiting for a common criminal. But that wasn't the end of my journey. When I got there, they transferred me to another bus, to where they called Tiger Base. It was there that they brought out even what they call court order and started interrogating me. Where I gave statement, even in defense, I was pleading that I need to take some medical, I need some medical attention. They interrogated me for hours. I think it was in that process that they got a call and took me to the office of the Commission of Police. Luna ordered that I should take him to police hospital. The rest is my story. Gentlemen, 
that is exactly what happened in Nemo, you know, that I find myself here now, and I think we we'll give glory to the Almighty God. I wouldn't know what other report, but whosoever has been collecting the money of Imo workers and calls himself elder and is eating that money, is eating blood money. Whosoever is keeping quiet, whosoever is writing any trash on top of the workers, some have died. There is a case where a man and the husband died, both teachers, nobody has paid him a dime, on and on. The governor in his statement yesterday said, I've never come to maybe greet him as my governor. I have never gone to see any governor in my state up to this moment, and I will not. You can't be owing workers, and I'll be seen, you know, coming to sneak in and out with you. And then the next thing people will say is that he has compromised. The kid of Hakim was there, Ruta Sukocha was there, actually they want to find out from them. I don't go there. Sent it everywhere. So I don't think whether that should be an offense. You know, for him. And he said I'm a plain look at politics. I don't know the one that is look at politics. I'm not a catch carrying member of any political party in Nigeria. And as a governor, you should be in the position of some classified information. You know, to say, Ajiri is a member of PDP, Ajiri is a member of APC. Just as said here, I've attended two rallies in my life. One was uh, that of Adam Sushomoli, who happened to be APC. And the other one, uh, Nasiru, in Cape, which happened to be APC. I've attended two inauguration. <coughs> In my life, the same way in the door for APC and the same way in Cape for APC government. So I don't understand what is meant by a play politics or political game. But I thank God that I'm alive today. And whosoever has diverted the workers' money, whatever it might be, has diverted blood money and has attracted generational costs. The same thing with those justifying it, either through their right up or whatever. So gentlemen, I don't want to be emotional about it. That's why we are today, and I have come to tell you that I'm hit on my life here today, if I at least to narrate my story. Thank you very much, comments.